In this tutorial, we're going to learn to customize the player in Articulate Presenter 360. So if you followed along in the previous tutorial, you know that we created a little branching interaction. So we're going to use that as the basis for modifying the player. So let's go to the Articulate tab and click on Player. And this is going to open up your Player Properties window. What you can see is a live preview of what the player looks like. And then you can show or hide elements of the player or mo make some modifications. And you'll always get a live preview as it updates. So up here on top you can see the things that we can change. So there's a layout which we're looking at right now. So these are the different objects on the player. Then you've got your menu so you can change the way the menu is displayed. You've got a Resources tab if you want to augment the course and add additional resources. There's a Glossary if you want to do that and Colors and Effects. So let's go ahead and look at this in a little bit more detail. So on the Player tabs here you've got the top bar. So there's the left top bar and the right top bar. And if we look at it right now in the top bar right we have our Resources tab. So if we had additional resources they'd be here. And I can click on that and then the resources would show. And then we can add or hide things. So for example I want to add the exit bar. So now you can see I got a little exit button. And I can move those around. So I've got the up and down arrows here. So let's say I want the resources to come down. I can click on that. And now that's the exit in the resources. So you can see how that works. I'm going to go ahead and get rid of the exit. So I've got my resources here. I've got my menu. Uh, if I want my menu to be a drop down menu, I can do that. So for example, I'm going to select my menu. And what I want to do is have it over here under the title. So that's going to, I'm going to keep clicking until it's top bar left. So now you can see I've got a menu here that um, will show up. Now the reason I have a sidebar is because I have this presenter information. So if I come down and look at the features, I can see I've got the presenter information. If I get rid of that, there's no need to have the sidebar. And so then I'll have the menu here by itself. So it's just something to keep in mind when you're working with the different features in here. So we've made some customizations, right? We've got our menu. We got rid of the sidebar. If I want to change my title, I can just add a new title. That'll show up here. I may not want this elapsed time to show, so I can turn that off. If I want to have the side menu bar, I can have the logo. I can have the presenter information. A lot of times when you're building courses, you don't have audio in the course. So it's a good thing to get rid of the volume control, right? Because then it doesn't confuse people. If they see the volume control, and there's no audio, they may think that they're supposed to hear audio. So not having the volume control is one way to alleviate that. And then of course you've got your seek bar here and your play pause. Now these are all these different features you can add to the player. When we're done with this, we'll go back to the slide properties because you can add or hide features unique to the slide. So for example, I might want the resources feature here but I only want it on certain slides. So I can add it at the slide level as well. So we'll go back to Slide Properties and, and look at how you do that. So we've made some customizations here. If I go to the Menu option, you can see I've got my menu here. Now this is a good example because we built this little interaction that um, when I'm on this first slide, I can click the different icons and they go here. And then when I click back, they um, come back to the start slide. So I might want to do one of two things. So one is I may want to indent these so that people can see that they're a sub-level of this, right? So if I want to make these all visible and I can click into them, I want these to all be a sub-level. So that's one way to do that. The other thing is I can say, well, I don't really want those visible because they're part of an interaction on the slide. So I want to get rid of them. So all I have to do is hide them so now it's not visible. So I click on here, click on the little eye icon. Now you can see, I can see them here. They're just not visible in the menu. Now that doesn't get rid of the slides, so the slides are still there. It's just that they're not available on the menu and so you can't click on them. So in this case, I have this interaction that when I click on these icons, I go into these different places and then I come back. So I may not want these slides to show on my menu. So that's the way I, I do that. I hide these slides. If I want to restore and I think, oh, I messed something up, that's okay. You've got some properties here, right? And one of them is to reset the presentation. I hit OK. 
and then it resets everything to the way it was and I can redo that. I can also click inside these and retitle them so I don't have to have the same titles that the slide gives me. I can just title them myself. It's not going to change the slide. It's just going to title them. It's just going to change them in the menu here. So as you can see, you can show or hide, you can indent, you can do some different things. There's some properties here as well in terms of the navigation settings. That you have free navigation, you have restricted navigation. The way restricted navigation works is you keep advancing and you can go backwards, uh, but you can't go forward unless you're going in the right order. And lock navigation means you're locked to that particular slide so you can't go backwards or forwards. So you can play around with that. The other thing you can see is you can wrap long menu items. So you might have a title that's too long and it gets cut off so you can wrap it and then it'll show on the titles here. So a lot of things you can do and you can change the behaviors that you get when you're going to different levels. So I would say just play around with that and play around with different options and see how those work for you. Now if you resources, sometimes people like to add additional resources in the course. So we've got a little resource tab enabled. And you just click here and add a resource. So for example, you may want to add a PDF or maybe there's some documents or something you want them to be able to download. So you can add those there. The glossary is pretty straightforward. You click, you can add a term and you can add a definition. And then the glossary is always going to be available to you from the player. So if there are certain terms or acronyms or things that you want people to be able to quickly access, uh, you can add those in there. And um, colors and effects, it's pretty straightforward. You've got some default color schemes here. You can choose one of those. So let's just choose the forest green. You can see how that works. And then you can do some advanced coloring as well. Now you've got a lot of control. So you can see there's all sorts of things you can change. It could be confusing when you first get started. I always tell people just click on something, make it yellow, and then you can kind of see what that is. Okay, I can see base, main, background is this. And so it starts to make sense once you do that. So you can change the colors as well. You can change the player fonts. And um, you can save, import, and export those for other courses. And that's basically it. So it's just a matter of getting in there, making the customizations you need, and then applying those uh, to your player. I'm going to go ahead and hit Cancel. Because again, we were talking about some of those player features. So let's say, for example, you have the glossary or you have the seek bar, you have the um, resources tab. If you come up to slide properties, you can see here are those player features. And you can say, well, I don't want the menu available on these interactions here. So these interactions, I don't want you jumping around. So I'm going to turn the menu off so you won't see the menu. Or I don't want the glossary available on certain slides, but I do on others. Or for example, you may have a slide that says go up to the resources tab and download the PDF. So you may only want to make the resources available on certain slides. So you can turn off or on these features based on what your needs are. And this is a matter of playing around with those. So that's basically it when you're customizing the players. You've got a number of features and things you can do on the player. You can recolor it. You can add certain elements. You can customize the menu. And then you can come into the slides and make those unique to each slide. Go ahead and play around with the player. Use this practice file and modify the menu and some of the features there. And then if you have any questions, jump in the community and ask. We're there to help you. And then watch the other tutorials to learn more about Articulate Presenter 360.